about uh, the abuse that was occurring and neglect. But you can take him uh, out of the home. Now, this is the thing with me. They always talk about family reunification versus foster care. But this is the thing. Not all families are meant to be reunified. Some are meant to be divided for the sake of the child and the child's protection. In a rainbow sunshiny world, you want a child with loving parents and that's the key. I personally don't believe in family reunification in an unhealthy environment. Personal preference, that's just me. Okay. Remove the child from the home. I, it, 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 this is the thing. It's better to be safe than sorry. Even though some people do false reports. Okay. Remove the child from the home. Then perform an investigation. Don't perform the investigation while the child's in the home. And then what happens? You get another case. You're focused on that. Oh, I'm forgetting about Johnny over here. But I'm going to get back to him. I remember that was an important case. Yes, he was abused. But little Johnny was abused too. So I got to go to his house. And then Samantha's. And this and other. And then what ends up happening is the baby is in. The baby gets stuck in the system. Stuck in the pile of paperwork. And that's what should not happen. Even if the baby has to be in a emergency shelter for a time and time the investigation is complete, then so be it. Another thing, why can't there just be levels to it where it's not so much on the caseworker where they have different departments, okay, dealing with the removal, then there's a person that deals with the proper placement of the child then there's a person that deals with the investigation um dealing with the child the therapy of the child you know what i'm saying so that one person isn't so overwhelmed but we can't hoard money so much that children's voices are not being heard Okay, this little baby could not fight back against the adults. I believe they were saying he was four foot one, 59 pounds. And the stepfather boyfriend was six foot one, 270 pounds. Now let's see that matchup, how that matchup is going to be. Even a grown woman, if he were to hit a grown woman, she would be seriously injured. Or some other man would be seriously injured. Now imagine this eight year old child, four foot one. 59 pounds and he's beating him repeatedly in addition to the mother shooting him with a BB gun the cigarette butts on his neck burning him it's just a torture that went on with this child for 8 months And the thing that made me um, upset and not happy is that um, the social workers 
again they put in an appeal and they weren't charged but they say oh we're trying to change the system so this doesn't happen again but yet at the end of the Netflix uh, documentary there was a young man named Anthony that lived in the same part of town and he died under suspicious circumstances after multiple calls to the same system of child protective services if you created a program such as this to protect children make sure you're protecting children and it's just not an illusion these children deserve to have a voice and that is your job once you walk into that house it's about the child it's about getting that child away from that hostile stressful environment interviewing them giving them a one-on-one talk have a therapist there as well to see some you know some cues as well put resources in that to help with the removal of a child from a hostile environment we shouldn't have children killed children killed to be an example of what we should do it shouldn't be oh my gosh there's an outrage this one little boy and then you know we don't do anything about it and that's what's happening these social workers weren't held responsible for neglect they were saying because they weren't the guardian or they weren't in the care of the system that is why they cannot press charges and it it's unfortunate that you take a job you go to school and you do this and that to become those that protect children but then when the time comes to it you become desensitized and you allow them to stay like oh I have so much I have so much a case low that it's fine that they stay where they are because if they don't if I do a removal then I have to do place in my paperwork then I have to go to the judge and I gotta do this and that and they're fine it's not that bad I already like am stressed this and the other so my suggestion is that they have a place that caseworkers can go that they have resources that they can have um they can go to their supervisors in order to prevent burnout but also be like this this is a very important case this young man is suffering me personally with what i have going on i don't believe i will sufficiently cover this case and there needs to be someone on here that is very active and with the other cases that I have going on I can't be as active as I would like to be so they need to have that resource for the social workers and caseworkers as well and not to put a an aura of fear around them if you can't handle the caseload then you shouldn't have been the social worker so you know what if you call for any means of help 
then they're going to feel like you're not competent and can't handle it. And guess what? You're going to be out the door. It shouldn't be that atmosphere. Because then you create an organization of being doing the bare minimum and I am not going to open my mouth when I need assistance because I need my job. I have a family. I have this. I have that going on and I'm not going to let it be risked by anything. And so but then you become selfish and not selfless. And when you're dealing with children, you have to be selfless, period. Because as you see with Gabriel, being selfless, if someone was selfless at least one time with him, especially when it came when it came to the social workers. Just removing him, being like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna do this late night. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do this removal, I'm gonna do the paperwork or what have you to get him out, this emergency paperwork to get him out of the home. Even though I'm dog tired, I'm gonna have to do it because it's the right thing to do. Some things is just the right thing to do. Sometimes you have to go against the grain. You have to go against the politics of the office to do the right thing. To do the right thing. And that was the thing. Um, um, There are some people that I was definitely proud of. The teacher that consistently called in. You know, she was making sure they knew. And what was going on but still to no avail the caseworkers either went to the home or just documented what the teacher saw and did not act upon it okay and um also the security guard who um, asked the other young lady at the DPSS office, I believe, that because um, Pearl, the mother, she was picking up paperwork and Gabriel held up his hand and had his hand on his wrist to non-verbally say, please help me. And the security guard saw that. So he went up to the receptionist. And she actually got trained for domestic violence and things like that. And he's like, um, did you see that young boy? Um, he he has so many bruises on him and this and the other. Um, are you going to um, report it? And so she goes to the back, asks the supervisor. The supervisor's like, no, because we're not paying you for overtime or we're not having you late here for overtime. And so she does, she's, the ball stops there with her. She's not doing it. She's not going to report. And, um, cause she doesn't want to be fired by doing the wrong thing and staying later than she should be. So he's very upset. Security guard is very upset about it. And it's like, you know what? I'm going to call my supervisor. Supervisor is like, you know, you really don't want to be involved in that. And I believe they threatened him with a a write-up of some sort or something like that. So what he ended up doing was he got the information from the receptionist, even though she wasn't going to report it. She did give him the information um, of Gabriel and the mother where they live so he could report it so that was um, I'm glad she did that but she should have stood her ground regardless because that's the right thing to do but going back to the security guard so he calls the supervisor turns him with a write up and then he's like you know what I'm going to call 911 so he calls 911 and 
He lets them know 